And good evening folks. I'd like to do the third section, the summary section of our eternal security and just do a little bit of a recap. We had looked in scripture how in 1 John 3 the writer John indicates there now are we the sons of God. We also looked in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 how that the Apostle Paul states behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation. So there is a day or a point in time where you make a decision that qualifies you as a party who has now become a son of God. Uh, the same writer Paul confers that you were rejuvenated by the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 13, he verifies that you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. And that took effect when he states, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's that gospel that he refers to, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and of course he makes the proclamation, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, relative to now being the acceptable time. He also qualifies in 1 Corinthians 15 that we're brethren. In 1 Corinthians 15, we're brethren. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he indicates that we are saints, called to be saints. We are called. We are justified. Romans says that we have been predestinated, Romans chapter 8. We have been called, we have been justified, and we will be glorified. We looked in, in uh, Colossians chapter 2, and we qualified from that passage that we have been circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, and that you and I have been forgiven all trespasses. And of course, 1 John chapter 2 verifies that he is propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So we start to combine these elements together, and we start to be critical now of some of the things that can take effect if we were to, in fact, lose our salvation. We can't be in Christ who is resurrected and die again. Christ died once. He will not die again. So we're either in the body of Christ and will be sustained within the body of Christ for all eternity, or we never were in the body of Christ. It's either one or the other. You're either in the body and you will be continually in that body and be sustained within that body for all eternity because we're risen with Him, or you were never in the body to begin with. So if we're to take the, the theory that you can lose your salvation, what that would mean, as implied earlier, is that instead of predestination based on foreknowledge, it would mean that God didn't have the foresight to understand that I would make a decision, that He could keep me, that His blood would wash me, that that propitiation for His sins was sufficient for my sin question, and anyone else's for that matter, and it would imply that individuals within that body would have to be then removed, and new individuals would have to be placed into that body to substitute whatever member of that body had to be substituted. So uh, this speaks now of a God who is less... Uh, informative, if you will, than what the scriptures certainly imply of God. So we take all these things in consideration. We've, been, we've died with Him. We've been buried with Him. We're risen with Him. We're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places in Christ. We've been sanctified. We've been called. We've been justified. We will be glorified. We've been sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. We've been given the title of, Now Are We the Sons of God? And confirmed that 
now is the day of salvation, and reaffirmed by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 13, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a synopsis on what we reviewed. There's a lot more to be said on the subject, but hopefully that will suffice to at least give us some form of a building block to solidify where you know you can be in relationship to security in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for your time.